I'll just recap here. You know, everything you see here in red, as a general rule, is something good to adhere to. The principle is four times the big blind plus one per limber when you make an open raise. When you decide to re-raise, it's three times the initial raise plus one per cold collar. If you decide to four bet, it's then two and a half to three and a half times this raise plus one per cold collar. Okay, three bet collar. <laughs> Good. Given your opponents the respective needed equity to make a call, either all in or to hit a playable flop. So again, I mean, when you're only, when you're, let's say, it's at 16 and you make some, you know, kind of a min raise, these guys can call you, I mean, one time in six, easy. And, yeah, that's, I mean, if you want them to do that, that's a good thing to do. <laughs> Um, if you don't, if you're on a kind of a vulnerable hand, then you, you definitely uh, definitely want to stick to the game plan. Good. So post flop uh, bets and moves. What I'm going to do here is just very very briefly fly through this um, so that we can look at one or two example hands in the replayer, uh, especially yeah, showing us what one, two, three, and four bets look like. Um, Maybe a couple isolation raise situations, maybe one or two hands that would cover quite a bit of all this. Um, and the reason I want to look at this post flop bit is so that um, we can talk about that a little bit more in detail um, in case these examples do get into post flop play. So good. C1. What is the line of play for you chess players out there? That's basically, if you know. Yeah, uh, modern chess openings, for example, the very uh, standard, logically sound moves um, that you make in the beginning of any game. Lines of play in poker are simply how you bet, given your position, your relative position, and your stack sizes. So. Um, I've given you an example here um, of a line of play. It would be uh, check calling the flop out of position. So let's say, for example, you have a pair of eights and you just call cold for set value. Flop comes, uh, you flop your set on a rainbow non-connected board, and you check call the flop. All right, turn comes, and it's a rag, and you check raise. For example, the turn, and then you push the river. This would be an idea, or this would be an example of a line. Um, what we have here is balancing deception. Balancing your lines means when you both bet your strong hands and your drawing hands, and even your bluffs, in exactly the same way. Not only do you bet them the same way, but you play them the same way. Deception is you know anything that that can uh, yeah, <laughs> deceive your opponents as to what you actually hold. So there's there's a fine line between balancing deception. It's um, for example, this check calling the flop, check raising the turn. Let's say I do that with a guy that I got a lot of history with. All right, I check call the flop, check raise the turn every single time I flop the set on the rainbow board. If he catches wind of that and is taking proper notes, you know, I check call the flop, I check raise the turn, he's going to fold everything that doesn't crush a flop set. So what I can do then at that point, if I've, if I've really got that rep, and that, that, by the way, that takes a lot of time. Uh, it takes a lot of history with a certain player, and you really have to know who's playing heads up and who's not. Um, heads up in the meaning of not one-on-one, -on -one, but um, really alert poker, say. Um, let's say you are playing a a really astute player and he's catching on to the fact that you're always playing this line check call the flop check raise the turn push the river when you flop your sets so deception is of course going to be when you check call the flop right check raise the turn with air uh, changing it up skillfully against an uh, against a player who is at a higher level now that is the case I mean you need to balance and you need to deceive actually you need to deceive as well as you can always yeah, it's part of the game, sorry. But balancing 
is something that you really only need to do against good players. Players who are um, aware of how you're playing, of when you're checking, of when you're betting, of when you're raising. You know, if they notice that you never 3-bet, for example, pre-flop, that's a big mistake, guys. You should, you know, if you're noticing that you're not 3-betting enough when you're looking at your hands, uh, when you're analyzing your percentages after the fact, you need to start, you need to start increasing that number. Because any time you then 3-bet, they're going to put you on queens or better and let everything that doesn't crush queens or better go. Or, worst case scenario, you guys are playing deep or, or big stacked. And they're going to call you down in position with suited connectors and small and middle pairs and they're only going to play on when they flop enormous draws and and sets so this is the idea of balancing you know it's um playing your big hands and your small hands the same so to say changing it up deception um seeing which way you know players are understanding your table image and then all of a sudden going the other way uh, again this balancing and deception is 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 something that you really need to incorporate uh, deception always Balancing against good players. Okay, and again, this is <laughs> this is such an enormous topic. I mean, this can be ten videos in and of itself. Um, point C two. We've got a flop, a turn, and a river, so-called C bet or continuation bet. So, what is a continuation bet? Continuation bet <laughs> is, as covered in the poker math videos, you guys should all look at again. Is when you are the pre-flop aggressor. You're the last person pre-flop to make an aggressive move and then you bet the flop turn comes you bet the turn again river comes you bet the turn or you bet the river again All right, that would be a so-called second and third barrel respectively on the turn and the river um, those are so-called continuation bets and the general recommendation is in two-thirds of pot size um, on two suited and connected boards um, and half pot more or less on dry boards just to keep your bet sizing uh, unreadable. Donk bets, or you're going to read that uh, maybe yeah, in different books uh, with different coaches as stopping goes. Uh, a donk bet is when you then are not the pre-flop aggressor. You're not the last to make an aggressive move pre-flop, but you bet into the flop or into the turn before the pre-flop aggressor has a chance to make the bet himself. All right, and we'll look at that here uh, probably in the second video actually with um, with the Hold'em replayer. Delayed continuation bets and delayed C-bet bluffs, uh, that's very advanced. That means that, so for example, you make your, your open raise 2-4 big blinds and somebody calls you cold. All right, flop comes and you flop an enormous top set on a rainbow non-connected board. You check. All right, the guy in position who cold called you checks behind. Turn comes and you make a bet. It's a so-called delayed c-bet in that case. A delayed c-bet bluff is when you say, for example, you know, you make your pre-flop bet, same scenario, you miss the flop completely, you flop air, and the guy behind you just, just checks behind. And, you know, then there's a scare card that hits, say an ace or king, uh, and you bet into it, representing that card. That's a c-bet or delayed c-bet bluff. Uh, what I term long ball bluffs are... Um, bluffs that entail uh, multiple streets. So, for example, <laughs> same situation. You open it up for four uh, big blinds. Uh, you get one cold call, and um, good, flop comes. All right, you bet half pot, you get cold called. Or you get, let's say you get called on the flop, just flat. Turn comes, you bet two-thirds the pot, and you get called again with nothing. Now, the river comes, let's say the flush is made or uh, the straight's there, it's a, it's a completely monotone board or uh, there's two pair on board or something like this, and then you make a triple barrel bluff on the river all in, and the guy folds and you take it down. This is so-called long ball bluff. These are exceedingly uh, risky. <laughs> and you really have to know your opponents to pull them off. Um, not to be advised for beginning players, but long ball bluffs, as a couple of examples we've listed here, okay, you have an isolation, uh, isolation raise in position, um, you know, guy limps, middle position, you raise it up, you're in position on all post-flop streets, and you just give him hell, just like I basically said, you know, he checks, you raise, 
um, turn comes, he bets, you re-raise, or whatever, you call it, and then push the river, whatever. That's, that's kind of a long ball bluff in an isolation raise pre-flop scenario. Uh, squeezes, again, you know, open raiser, cold caller, you three bet it, right, you squeeze up to 16, right? You maybe get one call, and then you push the flop, for example. Or, uh, okay, guy checks, you bet half, and then you push the turn to make it more of a long ball scenario. Uh, steals and re-steals, um, again, that's a topic in and of itself, but these are all scenarios where you can set up these long ball bluffs, and that, in order to really make that happen, you need to have good stats on your people. Uh, or, if you're playing live, you really need to know your opponents.